In this video, I will be showing how to change this, a pile of firewood, into one of these, a beautiful olive wood fountain pen. The process is done using a lathe. This is my lathe, it is an Axminster craft, and you can see that it has a headstock, tailstock, and a lathe bed. I will explain each of these later. This is a piece of the olive wood that we saw in the firewood basket. I have split it down using an axe and it is now ready to be turned on the lathe into the pen. The piece of olive is now mounted on the lathe between the headstock and the tailstock. The headstock is the part that turns and the tailstock is the part that holds the uh, wood steady. I will begin to turn and show you how it's uh, made into a pen. I switch on the lathe. It spins at a speed of around a thousand RPM. This is a carbide lathe chisel. On the end is a very sharp piece of metal made from carbide which is going to cut the wood. You have to be very careful at this point. Make sure everything is tight. Make sure you have this little piece here, it's called the banjo. It's close but not touching the wood as it spins. And very, very slowly and very carefully move the carbide cutter towards the wood. Once it begins to cut, you need to go very slowly and carefully. What I am doing is turning it into a round piece of wood. Here we have the wood completely round and a lot different from when we began. Let's tighten this up. As you can see it spins and when we touch it with the cutting tool, instead of all the chipping noise we will have a nice smooth surface. The shavings are nice and small and gradually we will continue to take this down until it's the size of a pen. I didn't want to bore you by showing you all the process of turning the rough wood into this but it's essentially using the tool, using the lathe and being careful. These are the parts that go up, go into the uh, wood to turn it into a pen. You have the ink cartridge, the end cap, Sorry, that's the end cap. That's the other end cap. This is the end cap with the little clip on it. You have the nib. And these two brass tubes. The brass tubes go inside the wood. So what we have to do is turn the wood down, cut it in half, Drill a hole in each half and place the tubes inside the hole. That will be the next part of the video. But first of all, I'll show you how to mark the wood.
The wood is marked using a pen or a pencil. First of all, you need to line up one of the tubes with the wood and place a mark a little bit further on than the length of the tube. The other tube goes from that line to another line a little bit further on from the length of that tube. In the middle I have marked a line showing the direction of the grain in the wood. The grain is what gives the pen its beauty and you can see this is a lovely piece of wood with a nice grain, nice what they call figuring and it will turn into a nice pen I hope. I have cut the piece of wood in two and you, as you can see they sit perfectly with the little tubes. Behind them are some other pieces of olive to be turned into pens later. I used a band saw to cut the wood but any saw can be used to do this. This is my band saw used to cut the wood and uh, I got this one from Lidl. It only cost 80 euros and it works very well. The next step is to drill the hole down the centre of the blank and the best way to do this is to do it on the lathe with a drill bit fixed in the lathe. The tailstock changed to a drill chuck. This is a, a chuck a lathe chuck at the other end to hold the blank. You do it by turning the lathe at speed and slowly pushing the drill bit into the blank. A little bit rough <laughs> but you get the idea. What happens is you end up with the pen blank the hole down through the centre. You do this on both pen blanks, this is the other one, and this will allow you to insert the brass tube into the pen blank. We'll now go to the bench to do the next stage. I'm going to glue the tubes into the blanks using super glue, instant super glue. The tubes have to be sandpapered into roughness and then these little bags on my fingers stop the super glue from sticking me. So first of all take some super glue Put an amount on the brass tube. By the way, this is thick super glue. It's different from the thin super glue that you get. And then you put it into the blank, twisting as you go until it gets well covered and stuck. If you get this stuff on your fingers, it'll glue, glue your fingers together. That's why I wear the little plastic bags. This stuff is super glue accelerator. What it does is it makes it stick instantly. I know super glue takes about 10 seconds to stick, but with this, it's instant. So you do this in both tubes. Make sure you put the right tube in the right blank. One is shorter than the other and a bigger diameter. So that's you have the long piece and the short piece with the bigger tube and the smaller tube. After the tubes are inserted we will move on to the next part.
For this next stage you need to change the setup on the lathe. This piece is called the pen mandrel. You put the livestock back in the tail and on the pen mandrel you have little spacers. So you put two little spacers on then you take the wood making sure that you align the grain and this is called the bush. The bush goes on next and then the wood. Then second bush. What the bushes do is they make sure that the wood is centered. Then you put on a third bush which is slightly smaller and you line up the marks that you left on the wood to mark the grain. The, next, the last bush goes on and it holds that piece central. Again two little spacers and a brass nut to clamp the whole lot together. This has to be fairly tight otherwise the wood will spin on the mandrel. And if it spins on the mandrel it won't cut. So it's tight. Test it. Spinning okay. And then you take up the tailstock and there's a little hole in the end of the mandrel which it goes into. Tighten the tailstock. Tighten the live centre. And that's your setup to begin turning down the wood with the carbide cutter. The next stage we'll start doing that. Okay, we're all set up and ready to go. <clears throat> so it takes about half an hour to take these blanks down to the size for a pen. So I'll start just to show you and then continue because it might be a bit boring to watch this for half an hour. Again, you have to be careful. Do it slowly. Once it touches, start cutting. Move along the blank slowly and surely. Doesn't matter which one you start on first, or you can do both at the same time. What you have to watch for is for catches. Catches are when the wood catches on the chisel, and you have what's called carrot. A large chunk of wood comes off instead of these little shavings. Once you get it perfectly round again, it becomes easier and you just go up and down like this. Or you get easier, less kicking, less roughness about it. and you just work your way down. You can hear that rubbing noise whenever the thing is moving. Once it's smooth, you can go a little faster. So I continue doing this and come back once I have the blanks down to a reasonable size.
and a little bit further on now as you can see it's important to do this slowly and easily working from either end of the blank this one here is a bit further down than this one so I'll show you how you do this on this one you start at one end with the chisel and just slowly bring it towards the middle as you get towards the middle it becomes smoother go to the other end take it in Stop there, this is thing you have to avoid. That happens when you push too hard with the two. This particular pen that I'm making is called a Conway Stewart Churchill. And it's called a Churchill because it's was actually used by Churchill but it is also cigar shaped so it's thin at either end thicker in the middle not as thick as you can see now but we gradually get it down to the right thickness what I think about this fluid is it's very hard olive wood which is good for making pens but it has been out in the rain and it's slightly damp what happens when it's damp is that as you get thinner and thinner the liquid expands and it can crack the wood take it down to the bush at each end because the bushes this little bit here and this little bit here this little bit this little bit they are the exact size of the pen kit and we'll come to the pen kit later on but as you can see you get a little bit of tar out right, which doesn't really matter at this point because we're still a lot way further away to go You can see by the darker colour in this wood compared to this wood that this is slightly more damp. I can feel it damper. So I need to be careful that it doesn't crack and split. One of the ways of preventing this is to coat it with super glue. Let the super glue dry and then turn some more. So I'll probably do that. The way to apply the super glue is with a piece of paper towel because don't use cloth because if you use cloth it can wrap around the lathe and if you're holding it it can wrap around your finger and I wouldn't like to know what happens then. So you take this paper towel you put some super glue on not much and wipe it across the blank. Put some on this one and wave it across the blank. Make sure you don't stay on too long or the paper will stick to the blank. Let it spin for a little while until the super glue hardens. You can use the accelerator. And what that does is it stops the wood from splitting. As I take more off, I put more super glue on, let it harden, spin it again, take more off. 
it's just a way of making sure that you don't get cracks on the, particularly on the ends, because if it cracks, you've wasted your time. I've taken the two blanks down on the lathe to where they just touch the bushes on each side. You then, with different sandpapers going finer and finer, you just sand everything down. In order to sand, you have to move up and down the piece of wood, otherwise you'll get scratches. Especially with the thicker sandpaper. This sandpaper is 320 grit. From 320 grit, I go to 1000 grit. The higher the number, the finer the sandpaper. Don't take too long on it, otherwise, you may get scratches. Then from 1000 to 2000. Tell because the noise gets less and less, finer and finer. You can feel it and it slips like glass from two thousand to three thousand. Started at 80 grit, which is very rough, and worked my way up to 3000 in stages. 3000 is about the finest you need to go. It's now got a perfect finish on it. The next stage is to seal the whole thing, and we'll do that next. To begin the uh, sealing process, I use this stuff here. It's a uh, homemade concoction from the internet, consisting of methylated spirit, alcohol, Shellac, which is like a natural polishing product made from the wings of some beetle or other. And linseed oil, also a natural product from a linseed. Using the paper towel again so that you don't catch it. Start up the lid. And put some of the seal on both ends of the pen blanks. Don't put too much on and give it away. Then keep the wheel spinning until let it soak in. What it does is the, the alcohol evaporates and the shellac and the linseed leave a colour and then I will use super glue on the outside to give it a very hard finish. After a few minutes it dried and you can feel it. It's very smooth. We'll come back to putting on the uh, super glue but as you can see it has cleaned it up and the grain is starting to come out. Gonna make a nice pan this. Okay. 
Now that it's been sealed, it's time to put on the super glue finish. Super glue is also known as CA glue, and what I'm going to put on seven thin coats, and at the very last coat, I will sand it again. Again, you use the paper towel, turn on the lathe, put some super glue on the paper, and just wipe it across. A very thin coat is all that's needed. Once you have that on, give it a spray with the activator, and that will get hardened. Just let it spin for a few minutes, and I always tear off the part that has been used because it can stick to your fingers and you'll have paper stuck in your fingers for the rest of the week. Let's go for the second coat. Another thin coat. Activate it. And tear off a piece of paper. So that's two. Couple of seconds. Some more CA or super glue. Quick spray. That's three. If you don't let it harden. What you'll get is lumps and rings on the uh, end shaft, and you don't want that. That's four. And six. Last one is seven. So let that all harden up, keep it spinning, and we're done with the layer. Sorry, we're not done with the lid. We give it a quick sanding with the 3000 grit sandpaper. This takes any little rings or lumps off. Gives you a nice smooth finish. Looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is put some polish on. I'll come back in a minute. This 
This polish is beeswax and olive oil polish, also homemade. I think the olive oil is good because we're doing olive wood. So you just put it on. Not much, just a quick brush over with polish. Sit for a few seconds. And using the paper towel again, buff it off. Once you don't see any more polish coming off onto the pot, paper towel, that's it finished. And now we're ready to assemble the pan. So these are the parts of the pan again, our two barrels or tubes, the middle piece, end cap, other end cap with clip, and the nib, this little thing protects the nib while you're working on. This little thing here is the ink reservoir. You can use this one which has a plunger on it and take up ink from a bottle or you can use the standard cartridge inks, ink cartridges. So in order to squeeze this thing together I'm going to use the wood bench face. This is where you have to make sure you put them in the right order. Paper towels are used as a protection against the jaws of the vase. So check that you know which way the grain is because the mark has disappeared obviously since you are turning it and make sure you align them with the grain again. And that's them aligned. So you set them down in that order. The nib will go on this end, the end cap will go on this end, sorry, in here, the clip will go on this end, and this will go in the middle. So I put this together and come back once it's all finished. Sorry, all you do is you put them in the right, twist the vice up and it squeezes them together. You just have to be careful that you don't misalign the pieces with the uh, brass tubes, otherwise it'll give you all sorts of problems.